God, God is good. Amen. God is so good. And that song that I love so much, uh, it just, uh, I just can't help it, you know. It just says, uh, in fact, sing it with me one time, okay? Sing it with me just one time, okay? Just, just, we don't have to have any music right now because we're going to get into the Word here in just a, just a minute. But all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. How many would like to sing it one more time? <laughs> All my life you have been faithful. Isn't he so good? All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing of the goodness of God. <laughs> How many of y'all could wave a big old hand and say all your life God's been faithful? God's been so, so good. Amen. And as long as you've got breath, as long as you're able and capable, you're going to sing of His goodness. Amen. You're going to tell people of His goodness. Some, that's a little bit of some of what I'm going to be talking a little bit about this morning. Uh, it'll go right along with that, that song. Okay, First Chronicles 16. And uh, I want to start with verse 1 through 4. First Chronicles 16, verses 1 through 4. And let me just say there's, there's uh, three things this morning that I, some words that I want to give you that I want to emphasize just a little bit and I hope would stick in your mind. Uh, the, f the first word that I think is very important today is the word first. Everybody say first. First. Okay, that's the first word. Pretty, pretty fitting there. The number two word is, or two words here together, is be mindful. Everybody say be mindful. Be mindful. Be mindful. And then the third one is something we're supposed to say, but it's two words joined together here, or, or three. Let me just say three. The Lord reigneth. Everybody say it. The Lord reigneth. Guess what? The left is not in charge. They're not reigning, I mean. They, they may be in charge right now or something. The extreme left are not the ones reigning. Come on. I mean, they may have a temporary time. The, the, the conservative folks are not reigning. Come on. The Republicans are not reigning. The Democrats, now I'm going to draw some stuff here now, okay, but uh, they're not reigning. Come on. The President of the United States is not reigning. Come on. A king or queen of any country is not the one reigning, not, not the one in charge. Who's reigning? The Lord reigneth. The Lord is in charge. You know, that message went out and, and said some of that, okay? Don't worry, don't fret, don't fear, don't be afraid. Because let me tell you something, the God we serve is the one that is ultimately in charge. And the Lord reigneth. The Word of God tells us to say that. The Lord reigneth. He even said, what, Psalms 107, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. How many of you are redeemed? Okay, say so. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. I'm redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. We sang about it some today in some of these songs and all. The blood of Jesus Christ. And that's why. And He came from heaven to earth and all. By way of the cross. And so we're the redeemed of the earth. That's what we are. We're redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And so I proclaim today the third thing that I want to get in your head just a little bit. Is the Lord reigneth. Amen. And he's seeing what's going on. The message said, the, the Lord knows what's going on. 
And whenever he moves or puts his hand down here on this earth in any way, he can do things that will blow people away sometimes. So the Lord reigneth. And one of these days, the, the, every, every, every knee, every eye is going to see him and every knee is going to bow someday. Because the Lord reigneth. Amen. Amen. And uh, he always has reigned. And uh, I'm so glad that if the righteous will humble themselves and pray and repent and turn from their wicked ways, then we can hear from heaven and God can heal the land. Amen? How many of you believe God's Word? I, I, I know you do. I believe you do. If you didn't believe God's Word, you wouldn't be at this church, okay? You wouldn't have come to church today, at least to a church like this, whatever this church is like. But you that are here know what it's like because that's why you're here, some, some of the reason why you're here. We may have a guest or two that, that checking us out, and if we do and I've overlooked somebody, well, I'm sorry. Of course, I know Dale and Muggs know what we are, okay? And know what we preach and what we teach and basically what we think. But one thing about it, here's, here's our textbook, and I want you to know that. It always has been and always will be. In fact, uh, I'll just go ahead and say, Tom, Tom told me a long time ago he would be in this church until we started preaching something that was not the Word of God, as long as we preached the, church, the truth, okay, that he'd be part of the church. So uh, I, I, I understand that. And I wouldn't go anywhere or stay anywhere that they wasn't using the Word of God and wasn't preaching the Word of God and didn't believe the Word of God. And if they started adding a bunch of stuff to the Word of God, I wouldn't hang around there. But now, what we need to do is not get mad not get mad and upset when the preacher preaches something out of this book that is God's Word and get mad and get upset and then take our little marbles and go home somewhere or quit or, or, or give up on God because it don't fit your lifestyle. How many of you know you're not supposed to get God's Word twisted around to fit your lifestyle. We're supposed to change our lifestyle to fit God's Word. Amen. We're supposed to let His Word come into our heart and life and change us, transform us, and work a miracle in us. And how many of you know he talked about many times turning from uh, the way we were living? Amen. We're turning from. It's kind of a military term like an about face. And you that know anything about the military, and of course Dale does. Dale went almost to the top. He went a lot closer to the top than I did because <laughs> he was a major, okay? And he went to West Point, and which that's powerful. That's awesome, and, and we we're, were proud of him, was proud of him then, and still proud of him. Um, and you know the main thing we're proud of him for and proud of you for, Dale? That y'all still in church, you're serving God, praise God. Yet regardless of what rank you were in the military, you still know that the, the real true commander in chief is the Lord Jesus Christ. And so praise God for him. The Lord reigneth, amen? And so he's in charge, it's not you or me, it's not your doctrine, my doctrine. It's not some church doctrine or creed, but it's what thus saith God says, and that's what we're going to be judged by. Okay, I'd like to read, and I know this time's going to run out. Uh, I, I'm going to have to skip, skip some of it again today, but listen to it as we, we look. I guess it's up there already. I'll read out of, the, out of my Bible. But there, it's on the back now. Okay, so they brought the ark of God and set it in the midst of the tent that David pitched for it, and they offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. Number two, if you can just roll right along. And when David had made an end of the offering and the burnt offerings and the peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord. And he dealt every, every one of Israel, both man and woman, every one a loaf of bread and a good piece of flesh and a flagon of wine. And he appointed certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord and to record a record uh, to and to thank and to praise the Lord God of Israel. And this guy and that guy and another guy and some more and go ahead to the next one. <laughs> That's the best way to get those names. And Ben and I also and, and Je Jeha something, the priest with trumpets continually before the ark of the covenant of God. They were ministering. And boy, I tell you, that blessed my heart, even the, the, uh, the trumpet with the 21 gun salute and the beautiful flag. The guy did an excellent job. Go ahead. 
And then on that day, David delivered, everybody say, first. first. Say it again. First. The first thing David delivered, and all this was going on record now, all this was being recorded, and he, he delivered first the psalm to thank the Lord, to give this psalm to thank the Lord in the hand of Asap or whatever his name is and his brethren. I can't say all these names like they're supposed to be and the people that think they can if they went overseas and find out they probably wasn't saying it exactly right. Okay, but we, we try sometimes. But the point is the first psalm that he put in the hand of this priest to deliver to the people, li listen, listen to what it was now. Go ahead to the next. I, I think we'll go a little further. To thank the Lord and to call upon His name and to make known His deeds among the people. Okay, let me, you can stop there just a minute. And you know, there, when, when, I, when I stop and think about this word first, uh, the, 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 the first psalm that was put in His hand for the people uh, and, and, and you know I mentioned here a few weeks ago that the, the ark of God of course was symbolic and was the presence of God okay in their midst. And that's why they carried it around they had special instructions of how to handle it. And you understand a lot of the recordings about that and everything. But now praise God we don't have to have a box and, and we don't have to set up build a tabernacle we are now, according to the Word of God, we're the tabernacle of the Most High. He dwells in tents that are not made with hands. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something, we have the presence of the Lord all the time, everywhere in our hearts, in our lives, in our homes, in our church, wherever we may be. So now we, we have the precious presence of God with us at all times. And we ought to be, I really feel like sometimes we ought to be a little bit more sensitive of that you know, and be concerned about that than what sometime we are or what sometime we show that we are or whatever. Because the presence of the Lord is with us. And, and I don't know about you, I wouldn't want to go anywhere. It's kind of like Moses said, Lord, don't, you know, I don't want to go anywhere if you don't go with me. And, and I, I pray that sometime when I'm leaving out or before I leave out of my gate, I'll stop and I'll say, Lord, now I don't want to go if you don't go with me. You know, I want your presence with me. And then I like what Psalmist David said as well. And he was one that gave a lot of these Psalms and everything. And he and wrote them and everything as God gave to him. And, and he said, Lord, don't take, please don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. And I, I mean, that's a prayer and desire of mine. I don't ever want to be without the presence of the Holy Spirit. Do you? How many of y'all, you know, appreciate the Holy Spirit? Appreciate His presence. I appreciate his comfort. I appreciate His help. Amen. I appreciate his, what I feel when I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit around me and on me and in me and even in other people. I appreciate the presence of the Lord. And, and so I don't want to go anywhere, you know, with that the Lord is not pleased or the Lord don't want to be there or go there. Uh, but the first thing they did was to, to, to begin to it, it said he delivered this psalm to thank the Lord, and and uh, one one place it says to praise him. But I just want to mention this word first, just for just a little bit here. Uh, you know, I get to thinking about several things in the Bible. Uh, little things just come to me. It, it may not be significant, but maybe it will find a lodging place with some of you. You know, the Bible says upon the first day of the week. The disciples went to the tomb of Jesus to look on the first day of the week. First, first. And even in concerning our giving, he said, on the first day of the week, let every one of you, you know, he said, every one of you, let the, on the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by in a story if God has blessed him. And then he said, give of the what fruits? Give of the first fruits. You know, not if there's any fruit left over or if I can afford to give you a little God, he said, give of the first fruits of our income. And then the prophet went to the little widow woman that was having trouble. He saw her out there gathering some sticks. And in fact, in one place I think it says two sticks. And boy, sticks, that's really going to be a big fire, isn't it? She said, I'm going to build a fire. And we got a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. 
And the prophet said, well, I'll tell you what, you make me a cake first. I mean, that's the gall. Isn't some pre- don't some preachers have the gall? Well, forget it. Take care of me first. Give me an offering. Send me $1,000. Give me, you know, first. I mean, they just, some of them got the gall, don't they? But here this prophet said, well, she said, we're, no, we don't have nothing but a little old bitty dab of meal and a little bit of oil. And said, we're going to go, we're going to go uh, get that and we're going to dress it and, and we're going to fix it up. And my son and I, we're going to eat this little cake and then we're going to die. And the prophet said, okay, go ahead. If you don't die, die. But first, first, everybody say first. first. He said, first, you go ahead and do what you want to do. If that's what you're believing for and what you think. But you first, you make me a cake and bring it to me first. I mean, that's, that's pitiful. These preachers want to be first. Some of these pastors want to be first. They want to be on the stage first. They want to be the first one to speak. They want to be the, get the first row. They want to get the best chair. Come on, first. Look at somebody right now and say, do you want to be first? <laughs> it don't matter. But y'all understand what. And he said, fix it for me first, and then you can do what you want to do. Well, guess what? She obeyed the man of God. How many of you know if, if God is moving and a man or a woman of God speaks something and it's direct from God, it can be prophecy or whatever, and if they speak it, if you'll receive that and if you'll obey that, I'm talking godly people now. I'm talking people that are proven. I'm not talking about fly-by-nights and all that kind of stuff. And of course, on lot of this, you're not the judge, I'm not the judge. It may be something God is doing and maybe wanting to test us. And I'll see we got some right now that can't stand solid preaching. They're getting up leaving. <laughs> and the youth pastor's one of them. No, they're going back to prepare the meal and I'm just cutting up. Thank you all for working. Uh, all right. Well, you don't need everybody to help them though. All right. Now, but how many of you know if you obey, obedience will always bring God's blessings. Amen. Amen? Obedience will bring God's blessing. And so they, she did like the man of God said, like that old preacher, that old prophet, fixed him a little cake first and brought it to him. And then she went back. And she was going to see if they could scrape a little bit, just a little bit out there. And when she opened the lid on that mill barrel, woo! Woo! Praise the Lord! The, the mill barrel was a lot more in it than what it was when she was fixing to fix it. And just eat it and serve her son and die. And then she poured some oil out. And guess what? The next day she scooped some more meal up. Or that evening she scooped some more meal up. She poured some more oil. The next morning she scooped some more meal. She poured some more oil. The next mo- th- that evening she scooped some more meal. She poured some more oil. All out of that one that she's just had enough to bake two little, little bitty cakes and her and her son was going to eat it and die because a man of God come and said, well, you go ahead, do whatever you want to do, but bring to me first. First. There's something about first. And you know, I, I uh, uh, let me just go ahead and say something. How many of y'all have been around and heard a lot of critical, judgmental people? I didn't tell you to start pointing. I just said, raise your hand. How many of y'all heard? Well, you, 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 know, you know what the Lord says about the first in that situation? <laughs> I, I don't have a big old chunk of wood, but I, I illustrated it before over the years. He said, can you get this? First, get the beam out of your eye. Are you hearing what he said? First, get the beam out of your own eye. Then you can see clearly. How many, if somebody was digging in your eye, you'd want them to see clearly? You'd want them to see good, especially if they got tweezers coming at you. Come on. Or if they got, and then he says, first get that big thing out of your eye, then you see clearly how to take that little speck, little old bitty t- tiny speck that you're judging somebody else about. Come on. Do you get it? First. Take care of yourself first. And, and somebody said, well, I don't know if I've got anything. Well, ask God. I guarantee you he'll show you Amen. through the power of the Holy Spirit if you'll listen to him. Right. How many of y'all understand? 
If you want to say, God, please. See, the, you know, here, here, here's what one guy said, one of the prophets. He said, see if there be any wicked way in me. Or, or even David said that. See if there be any wicked way in me. And, and Jeremiah said, Lord, you know my heart. So check my heart out. How many of y'all know if you're really sincere with God and you'll be honest before God, then God will show you clearly, come on, what the situation is in your life. Come on, first, before you go trying to tend to other people. Look, either say amen or say oh me right now. Don't matter because if it's according to what you say is what people know about you right now. Amen. Amen. It's real easy sometimes to try to straighten everybody else up first instead of first getting ourselves. Hmm, I think I've said enough. I see fumes coming out of people's head right now in the spirit realm. If I could sprinkle some water on some of you, it'd go pshh. Because we like to first get everybody else straightened out sometime. You know what Jesus told somebody one time when they, somebody called a woman, even in the very act? It always made me wonder, well, how'd they catch her in the very act when she was committing adultery? What were they, what are they? They're peeping tops? They're looking in the window? What are they doing where she was out doing that? Do any of y'all think like I think? And he said, Lord, the law, your word, you know, the law says, of course it is his law now, the word, says that this woman ought to be stoned. And I, I really, I really honestly believe Jesus when he stooped down on the ground. I don't know, the Bible don't say what he wrote. But I really do think probably because it was stone, he probably wrote the Ten Commandments again, maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But whatever he wrote down there, one by one, when he started writing, if he said, Thou shalt not steal, somebody that remembered they stole something, they go, ooh. And, and here's what happened. Have y'all ever seen a, a dog run off hollering? Has anybody ever thought, thrown a rock at a dog? <laughs> Come on. Oh, you, oh not, I know not y'all, not most of y'all. There's only a few of y'all ever done that. But I have before, I'll admit it. I throw a rock, get out of here. They'd have some dogs barking at me in my own yard. I'd throw a rock at them. Arr, 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 and they, they'll tuck that tail between their legs and they'll take off and run. And I just about see those scribes and Pharisees when Jesus stooped down on the ground. The ones wanting to have this woman stoned to death. He wrote liar. He wrote thief. He wrote embezzler. He wrote coveter. He wrote all kind of stuff on the ground. I think what he was doing was writing their sins because he knew what their sins were and he was exposing them on the ground. How many of you know God can do an exposure? And he was writing it on the ground. And then about that time he looked around and all them, all them fellows was gone. Now, I didn't mean to call him a dog, but they took off. And then Jesus said, woman, we're thine accusers. First of all, he said, let him that is without sin cast the first stone. That's when he stooped down and started writing. First, if you ain't got no sin, then you the first ones to throw stones, the first stone. And then whenever he looked around, when he got through writing on the ground, he said, who are thine accusers? She said, there are none, Lord. And he said, neither do I condemn thee. Now, sister, daughter, go and sin no more. Isn't it good that God would give us a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance, a fifth chance, or whatever chances we need? Amen? Yeah. But, you know, there are some things we need to, I really honestly believe that we need to, you know, be concerned about that first. And, and you know, one thing that it, that it said that I like uh, when it talked about, and I, I like this, uh, let me see if I can, in uh, Isaiah, I believe it is, Isaiah 23 and 30. Uh, no, that may not, I may have the wrong, 
the wrong uh, scripture there. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's no. No, First Chronicles twenty three and thirty. Okay, First Chronicles twenty three and thirty. Uh, I knew that didn't look right. Some of my writing has run together. Go ahead and put it up when you get it. First Chronicles twenty three and thirty. It says to stand every morning to thank the Lord and to praise the Lord. And then he said again, likewise at the evening. But do you see that? To stand every morning. How many of you know the first thing that we ought to do when we wake up in the morning is to begin to praise the Lord and begin to thank the Lord? Begin to thank Him for who He is and what He is and what He's done. What, uh, just, and just praise Him, give Him glory, give Him honor. Amen. To stand every morning, every morning, morning, most of the time, you know, you know, I mentioned it here just a, a week or so ago or whatever, but if we don't watch out, if we don't do it first thing, right off the start, the next thing you know, the phone will ring, come on, the email will come, the Facebook will go to beeping. My wife, I don't even know what's what on her stuff. She's got a couple electronic gadgets, and I'll say, honey, your phone's going off, your phone's going off. she said, yeah, I know, that's just so-and-so. I know, that's just so-and-so. That's just, she'll, she'll name what it is. She'll, that's just Facebook. That's just, that's just somebody making a comment. That's just, she knows by the beep what that means. But if you don't watch out, you'll get wrapped up with that. Come on, you'll see who's doing what, who's doing it, whose birthday it is, and who's this and all that. And of course, now you know you don't have to look for Francis. You know when her birthday and when the celebration is. So you got all that in church this morning, whether you want it or not, and whether you're on Facebook or not. But your phone will go off, the phone will ring, a text message will make a racket. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Or the news will come on. And early in the morning, if you watch news, let me tell you what you're watching, really. I'm going to tell you what you're watching. You're watching advertisements for attorneys, for attorneys, and you're watching advertisement to buy a new car. Now, how many of y'all want to get up at the start of the day and look, see what car's got the best interest rate? Well, they don't tell you all that anyway, but they'll advertise, and boy, they got some good looking ones too. I've got a favorite one. Old Christy up there say, come on here and buy this and get this right and get this done and blah, 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 and come see us at Mazda Motors in Bowser City, Louisiana. I went up there to buy one and I asked for Christy and they just laughed at me. <laughs> she was on the TV every morning, but she wasn't there. I wanted to get a hug and I wanted her to sell me a car. And I wanted to tell her how pretty I thought she was and how sweet and her, I love her voice and I like her personality. Francis to say sometimes, honey, your girlfriend's on. <laughs> So she lets me have her for my girlfriend. <laughs> but how many of you know what I'm talking about? If you go to watching TV, you want to kind of catch the news, catch the weather, they'll say, after this, after the break, we're going to give you a seven day report. After this, they're going to, and if you stay tuned, you're going to, they, they do that on a lot of this other programs too. They keep you there the whole time for the whole 30 minutes or the whole hour. And wouldn't it have been a whole lot better if first we left the TV off? And at first, we didn't turn that electronic gadget on. And first, we decided to give thanks to God, offer Him thanks, give Him praise for His goodness and for His mercy. First. And then every evening, when we get through that day, before we go to bed, take time. Don't worry about gun smoke fixing to come on. How many of y'all like gun smoke? I think, you're, I think we're going to get to watch him in heaven sometime. <laughs> if he made it. <laughs> After you visited for a long time, how many of y'all want to see old Matt up there? And don't you hope Kitty got saved and <laughs> quit? And old Festus, I'd love, I'd love to see old Festus and jaw with him a while, wouldn't you? <laughs> and I'm cutting up. But how many of y'all know it's important? And I, I didn't get nowhere this morning. How many of y'all know it's important? The first. Give God thanks. That's the first psalm that the king handed and put in the hand of his ministers. He said, first, I want you to deliver this psalm to thank, this psalm to thank and to praise God. You know, I'm going to tell you something. Things will begin to happen if you'll begin to be a praiser. Things will begin to happen for you if you'll be, begin to be a thankful person. You know, God said one thing, the sign of the, the last days, and you can read about it in the 
2 Timothy, the third chapter. He said, in the last days, men would be, one of those things he said, unthankful. Unthankful. And they would have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. And he, and he warned, and he said, from such turn away. But he said, people in the last days would be unthankful. I don't know about you. He said, in everything, give thanks. You know, I don't care what, I don't care even if it's something bad, you can still thank the Lord. You know, look, I, I thank the Lord whenever Timothy told me, he said, look, I got to go. He was helping me. He said, I got to go. He said, Autumn's had a wreck and I've got to go. Said, he, he did tell me that. He said, she's okay, but I'm going to go. Well, I don't blame him. I would have went too, okay, for my wife or, or whatever. Or if they needed me, I would have went then. But he said, she's okay. But when he said, it's okay, well, then I didn't worry. But I prayed for him. But you know, let me tell you something. It's important, you know, in everything. You're not thankful that she had a wreck, not thankful that her car, in fact, she told me a little bit ago when she gave me this mic here, and I appreciate the ministry that she does now in helping getting all this done. Give me that mic and the receiver and had it keyed together, paired together and everything, and said, here, and I said, I'm sorry, baby, that, that happened. I'm glad you're okay. And she's sore right now, so lift her up in prayer, because sometimes that happens even after an accident. But I mean, the devil has really hit the family. I can tell you that right now, it really has. And we've got another miracle here that y'all all know about. Christina, like the, it's a miracle she's even here now. But you know, in the middle of all that, the car might be tore up, but praise God, we can give God thanks that Autumn is not all tore up, that Autumn is here. Amen, that Autumn is alive and well, okay? She may get a little grouchy now, Timothy. Well, forget it. They're up there doing something else right now, or he said something to her. But anyway, he didn't hear that. But let me tell you something. We, in everything, we ought to give God thanks. Amen? Amen. This morning, I was picking up my wife, and I said, well, did you, did you thank him? And she said the typical thing, I think, something like this. For what? No, what did you say? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. You sure did. I'm sorry. She said, what? I went in there where she was getting ready. And all she was doing is just getting powder or something, whatever gets on the mirrors. How many of y'all know what a woman's, I better shut up. How many of y'all know what a man's mirror looks like? He's been shaving and slinging shaving cream all over and stuff like that. And sputtering and all, how, how nasty a man's mirror looks, okay? Okay, y'all know, women's not, but anyway. I said, honey, did you thank him? She said, for what, my nice bathroom? And all these mirrors and all this light? And I said, no. She said, what else did you say? No. Oh, uh, did I thank him for my shower? You know, I, some of y'all seen it, some of you didn't. I built her a rock shower out of sandstone rock from like up in Arkansas. I built that, and if you're ever a guest at our home someday, Dundale, by the way, if y'all are staying in a motel, you don't have to do that. You can come. We've got a room, and it got a nice rock shower in it. And I said, no. It was pouring down rain outside. And she said, what? I said, did you thank him that you've got a nice garage inside out of the weather? You can get in your car and crank it and push a button and drive out and never have to get wet. Oh, baby, I appreciate it. You've always took care of me. But, you know, let me tell you something. And then that was so sweet watching her react like that. But I was just cutting up. And I said, now, I've got to go out the front door. Plus, I'm bald-headed. And I've got to get in the rain to get in my old Dodge Dually truck. But I said, I'm sorry. That's what she said. But let me tell you something. We ought to thank God. Now, that, I was picking at her because I know she's thankful for that. She's already said it before. But you know what? We ought to count our blessings every day that we live. I really do. Don't, don't you think we should? We ought to count our blessings every day that we live. God's goodness and mercy to us. Amen. Let me just say, if somebody's here and you want to pray, maybe you're a backslider or whatever, you want to get back in fellowship with God, you can do it just like that. Because if you'll hear His voice and open your heart's door, He'll come in if you'll invite Him in. You can come to these altars right now. If you're here and you want to be saved and you're not saved, come to these altars and look at one of us and get some attention. We'll get somebody with you. But the rest of you, let's just go ahead and... And you can stand if you like. I'm fixing to let you go. Some of you will be staying and eating food here that they've got, the loaded baked potato. We appreciate that and, and all. Let's sing that song one more time. 
just give God thanks right now. We sang it two or three times, and then you consider yourself dismissed. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. When we sing it one more time, give God thanks for two or three things that you can think of right now that He's been so good to you. You know, I, I've told you all before, when I, when I was in the military and we had to, God had to go overseas, we were flying in over Vietnam and the devil says, you ain't never coming out of here alive, you're going to come out in a doggy bag. But guess what? God was faithful. I didn't get hit with nothing. People around me did, but all my life God's been faithful. Another time I hit a deer and I went down the pavement over 300 feet, flopping and flipping, broke my collar, blown my kneecap. Two weeks later, God was so faithful to heal me of all that, and I didn't even have to get a body cast like they said. But I, I, didn't, get, I didn't get killed. I didn't get run over by that truck that was behind me. All my life, He has been faithful. How about you? You know, we've had children that almost died, our daughters, both of them. But all my life, he has been faithful. Amen. I thank him for it. I praise him for it. Brother John Peter's been in some treacherous situations and all. Some of it I'm a little aware of here of the last few years. And he's called or text and we prayed. And let me tell you something. God's been faithful to him and brought him out and brought him through and brought him back safely and got him out of some situations that he could be imprisoned right now or either his life be gone. But I don't know what you've been through. But all my life he has been faithful. Amen. You know, Lynn, I know when you were up there with your boy, you know, God was still faithful to you with the power of his peace, you know, and his love. Sure it hurts. Sure it hurts when you lose somebody. When, you know, but let me tell you something. God is so faithful, okay? One more time and I'll quit. I promise. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Yes, I will sing and talk about it and tell people goodness of God. Shake hands with somebody around you and hug some necks if you want to. Now, you don't have to. Some of you don't want, that's fine. But God's been good to us through this COVID stuff. All the mess we've been going through. God is so good. God has blessed us so much. Praise God. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord.